All right, guys, we're here at the 2017 EMS Expo in Las Vegas, and just so happens uh, Safe Life Defense is in Las Vegas, and they're here at the Expo. So we're here. This is the president of Safe Life Defense, Nick. Nick, thank you for coming on. Yeah. We just shot a video of him giving his sales pitch for all the stuff that'll be out uh, pretty shortly on the channel. But I just said, would you mind coming on a live stream and we'll talk to people and see what their questions are. I know people have had a lot of questions in the past about new stuff that's coming out in body armor and what they're going to be doing in the future, especially in regards to the carriers. But there's a lot of interesting stuff and uh, new products that he's been talking with me about. He wants to come out on the market. And so he's going to talk to you guys about that. All right. So what what is the next thing that's on your agenda for Safe Life Defense, what do you guys want to come out with next to like expand your, your product? So the thing that we're doing next is definitely going to be our tactical armor system. Um, everyone's been begging for it for basically ever, um, and it's finally time to do that. Uh, that's going to be our Molly vest, uh, more traditional tactical vest that, that people are expecting, so you can add on your pouches. Um, however, we're going to add some of uh, Safe Life Defense special features into it. Uh, not ready to release that yet. Um, but of course that's going to be compatible with all the panels uh, that we currently have. So if you currently own a Safe Life Defense vest, you'll be able to pull your panels out and put them into that tactical vest within seconds. So you'd uh, be talking about how much for an upgrade to go from the concealable carrier to do the tactical carrier? We don't have any official pricing on that, on the tactical carrier yet. We're probably looking at something similar to the first response around 169. Um, I'd say definitely under 200, but you know we're we're still in the the final stages of design, so we haven't really gotten to the the price point on that yet. That seems to be the thing everybody's been been begging me about is like, when are they going to come out with a with a Molly vest so that I can look cool too and I can put whatever pouches I want on it? Uh, the other thing people have asked for is on a Molly vest to still have a Velcro section, which I would imagine would be something to be on the agenda to to make sure that as People say that like they have to have they have to be able to have ID on the top of, of course. It. And for the we are absolutely going to be having a uh, a section for your Velcro patches, especially if you already own one of our vests with patches. It's going to use the exact same panels, same shape, meaning that we can also use the same patches. So um, one thing that we are planning on doing instead of using the traditional molly up here and then throwing your patch on it so it's not it's it's just bulky and sticking off your body we will be we will be going with a laser cut molly sort of system up top um, so it's much more flush and we're probably going to do that recessed similar to how we do our patches here where they're not sticking out too far they don't get caught on anything um, they'll just be under that so dress. you'll be able to put a patch on there if you want or a big uh, you'll be able to put a pouch up there if you want or a big patch exactly. for identification. Exactly. There you go. Well, that answers most of people's questions. And here's the other one that uh, that comes up a lot is everybody asks about a white carrier. And I heard you explaining to somebody else earlier why you guys don't have a white carrier out yet. Yeah, well, our, our the white carrier is something that people ask for, um, but we get a lot of complaints. We hear a lot of complaints about white carriers as well. Uh, they get dirty, they get disgusting, and you see every single stain on that vest. Even though our carriers are water-resistant, antimicrobial, and nothing really sticks on it, it still gets dirty. Um, so we do our desert sand color. Um, that's a color that was made for Las Vegas Metro. It's a very light tan that conceals even better under white than typical white carriers. Because when you have a pure white, a pure white shirt and you try and put a pure white vest under it, it'll actually stand out. You'll be able to kind of see, uh, kind of like, uh, have you ever worn just a, a dress shirt with an undershirt that's white and the yeah. dress shirt the, that stands out, out you can more? See the clear outline of the exactly. Shirt of the vest. Well, that's where desert sand comes into play. That kind of off-white, light tan actually conceals better in most cases with white than white would. So um, while people haven't really caught on to that too much yet, we're sticking with that. We do still plan on, plan on coming out with white sometime. Um, not sure when, though. Okay. And what else do you guys have on the, on the long plan? We really plan. We really <laughs> plan uh, just for the the immediate future. We grow so fast, and we get so many requests. And we're we're really learning about our customers every day, so we don't really plan that's, out too far. Yo, know, that's something that I get from a lot of people. They don't believe me when I tell them. When did this start for you? This, what started Safe Life Defense? We're almost two years old now. We're about a, about a, about almost a year and a years. half. About a year and a half, maybe a little bit more. Uh, we started on Indiegogo. Um, again, we're starting social. You know, we, we really like to engage with our customers, people who are potential customers, and learn from them. Um, so we're, we're always online, and that, that's how we got started. A year and a half ago. Year and a half. Year and a half. To, to where you're at now. Yes, and yeah, that's, that's it's, pretty it's spectacular been pretty crazy. for a body armor company mm -hmm. to come up that way. All right, so is there anything else 
that, that you want to talk to people about? We're going to scroll up and look at comments here in a second and questions. I'm sure people have questions on there, but is there anything else you want to get out yeah. there before we go to comments? Let's check out their comments. I'm sure they got, we got something good there. Scroll you guys in. If you got questions about Safe Life Defense or Body Armor or why things are the way they are, now is your opportunity. This is the guy that, that designs and makes it. Like your channel? I like Thank your channel, you. yeah. <laughs> Mike Wilkerson. Uh, can't wait to hear it. Let him talk, Jabber John. <laughs> All right. Jay Leber says, yo, as soon as I get some cash, I'm going to buy a vest I just got on the sheriff's office. One thing about that is that uh, not everyone knows this, but we do have a law enforcement discount, an EMS discount, and a security discount. If you work as a first responder, law enforcement, um, also veteran or fire, make sure to ask us about that and you'll get 10% off your order. So they email you guys about that? Email, call. Um, actually, uh, you can use, uh, you know what, if, if you're listening and you're any of those, just use the, the promo code SLDEMT. We're here at uh, EMS World, so we can uh, let them know about that right now. SLDEMT gets them 10% off their entire order. There you go. The answer's that. The Iceman says, does Safe Life Defense sell rifle plates or just soft armor? No, all of our vests have front front plate or uh, Low pro- While he's pro- talking, I'll go get one. Cool. Yeah, all of our all of our vests do have low-profile front and rear pockets. Um, those are made for rifle plates. Um, our rifle plates are level four in conjunction ceramic and ultramolecular high-weight polyethylene. Uh, that gets a thinner plate at uh, for le- less expensive, um, and this will defend up to 30 out six steel core armor-piercing ammunition. Uh, these are compatible with every carrier that we have. Um, also, if you already have your own 10 by 12 plates, those are compatible with our carriers as well. And that just slides right in the yes. top of all the carriers. Yeah, we could get that done. Let's see. Very easy. This is also, um, so you, unlike a lot of uh, a lot of vests where you'll have to put your, you'll have to add your plates in, you'll have to pull this apart, lift this up, and shove it in from the bottom. This, having a, this low profile pocket in the front allows you to add your rifle plate in at a moment's notice. And uh, time is very valuable, and uh, we're really focused on getting that in there as quick as possible. So that's always right there, front and center, very easy. All right, let's, what else we got? Hello from Cincinnati, Ohio. What is the highest level of soft body armor from Air Gecko? It's actually a great question, um, and we actually have the highest level of soft body armor that you can purchase today. Uh, that's our exclusive level 3A+. Plus. Um, that defends against handguns, shotguns, strikes, slashes, stabs, and even armor-piercing, typically armor-piercing handgun and shotgun rounds, such as Liberty Civil Defense and FN57. That includes the, the law enforcement only green tip uh, red box, which everyone always asks about, and that's no problem. It'll even defend most 5.7 rounds out of a full-size PS90. But you guys have that on your Facebook videos, right? We do. We you do. We're actually shooting them on the against the, the PS90. We do. We're actually going to be coming out with a, uh, a new video pretty soon as well. We've been so busy, so we've been having a hard time actually getting that out. Um, but that'll be coming up real soon. Yeah, videos take a lot of time to edit. <laughs> Jamie says, "Hi, I want to be a police officer. Stay in school. We're going to the military." Jezza says, "Test the soft." Soft armor vest with a crossbow. You remember that video I told you that I was telling you about like two seconds ago? Crossbows included there. There you go, on their Facebook page. We'll link it down in the description whenever I get home from Vegas. Adrian says, hello from Las Vegas. Have fun out there and stay safe. Well, we're here. We're having fun. Mike Wilkerson says, talk a little bit about your EMS-based vest. The detail looks extraordinary. You know what? Let me uh, let me see if I can grab one for you for a moment. We have some people checking it out right now. Andrew, can I borrow that vest for a moment? Yes, that one. You just sold it to you. <laughs> you can have it back in a moment, though. <laughs> so this is our EMS first response vest. Um, by the way, is this backwards on there? As well? well, it won't matter. People will oh, figure it out. All right, cool. Well, this is this is our EMS uh, specific vest. Um, this is in navy blue and classic style. The classic style has one small patch on the front and a badge pin holder. Um, that's very po- very popular for agencies that have badges. Uh, you get the Star of Life and EMS on the front. Um, as well as EMS on the rear. Um, That is one of our standard patch packs. Um, And you can customize that on our website or if you give us a call, you can have that say absolutely anything you want. 
Um, and this uses the same panels as all of our vests, so you can pull panels out from your concealable um, and put them right in here, and you're good you, to go. You were telling me earlier that there's agencies that are having this patch custom made with names on it, so that's that they can wear this as a uniform item? That's extremely popular. Um, it's more popular in our modified version, um, where you have the large patch across the front. Um, that leaves this patch open where a lot of people put, of course, their name. All right, the Iceman says, do they sell rifle plates, level three or four? If so, what's the estimated cost and purchase restrictions? So what's the cost and purchase restrictions? Because you already talked about the plate. Sure, so uh, we do have the level four in conjunction. They are 169, um, and purchase restrictions, as long as you haven't been convicted of a felony, you can own a rifle plate. They're legal in all 50 states. There's nothing stopping you from owning that. Um, and as Is long it there's one state that it has to be it has to be face-to-face -face transactions? It does. Conne varieties. Connecticut does require face-to-face -face transactions. Now, the exception is if you are active law enforcement or if you are law enforcement or active military, in which case we can ship it to you as long as you provide a military or law enforcement ID. There you go. So almost no restriction on it. Mike Wilkerson says, what are the heat readings of your vests in general? Heat readings? Uh, there's not, that's not really a thing with body armor. Um, now, some body armor in high heat will degrade um, very rapidly. One is a pure polyethylene vest. Um, polyethylene is essentially what they make garbage bags out of, uh, remanufactured to stop bullets. It does a fantastic job, um, but in high heat, high temperatures, it will melt. Uh, being out of Las Vegas, we choose not to do that because um, it can melt in a car. Um, that won't happen with, uh, with ours. Ours are made of a custom Kevlar, um, so it has to be pretty hot before something starts happening. Yeah, Kevlar is pretty, pretty stable. They use it in tires. Yes. So I mean, it, has to, it has to be pretty mm -hmm. heat stable. It is also, Kevlar is also flame resistant for the most part as well, so. Well, here's, here's one that I already know the answer is. Randall says, oh, hi Randall, uh, how long are they on the shelf before being sold? We have a few hundred people that are waiting for orders right now. We sell out very quickly, um, and their vests are being made this second. Those are expected to ship next week, so by the time they get their vest, uh, it's about a week old. So if you're worried that the vest has been sitting on the shelf for a year, and now you're going to get something that's out, you know, you've got a year out of the warranty period, that's not that's not a thing. We, we, it's not a, a rule of ours, but we no, we've never shipped a vest that's older than 30 days. Um, our armor goes so quick, and we're constantly making it, and we want to make them in smaller batches so people do get a new vest. No one's ever gotten a vest older than 30 days old. So there you go. You're not you're not going to lose a year in time because it's been sitting Absolutely on the shelf. Absolutely not. Uh, the Iceman says, "I have a carrier. What does it use in conjunction with?" So he's asking, "What does an in conjunction with plate mean?" Sure, so an in-conjunction plate, um, this is an in-conjunction plate, for example. Um, in-conjunction means that it must be used in conjunction with soft armor. Uh, typically, that would be a level 3A, um, although that's not standard, so you want to check whoever you're, you're, you know, the plate's from because it may be an in-conjunction level 2. Uh, but that if basically, in-conjunction means that that plate only gets that rating when it's used with a backing of soft armor, typically level 3A. Uh, that helps cut down the weight of that plate, um, as well as the cost. Yeah, and the thickness. See, so that's a just level four ceramic plate. One moment. Plate. That's a level four ceramic plate, and it's pretty thin. All right, let's move it down. We're going to have to go out front and grab it. Sorry about that. Do they come in fuchsia? <laughs> we can special make them in fuchsia, but you have to order 2,000 of them. <laughs> when you're ready to order 2,000 of them, Joe, come talk to them. Mm-hmm. Mike Wilkerson says, what kind of personal experience is the gent with the beard, which is offensive to me now, have with using vests? I came in late, sorry. I'm actually president of Safe Life Defense. I'm the sole designer of our body armor um, and definitely our body armor expert. Um, body armor is my life. That's all I do. So as far as my experience goes, um, it's going to be hard to, to find someone with, with much more. That's, that's all I live for. Well, what, what started off the idea of doing Safe Life Defense? So I originally went to school for law enforcement, criminal justice. I wanted to be actually a New York State trooper, uh, SWAT team, and hope, you know, was hoping one day something maybe like FBI. Um, fortunately, unfortunately, um, business has always been something that I'm I just excel at. Um, 
and it kind of came down to I, I had to make a decision out of college and I took the business side of it. This was a way for me to merge uh, my passion for criminal justice, helping and law enforcement and my business so I get to be around the things that I love, be in the industry that I love and, uh, and provide a product for, for people that I care about. Mr. Fusion asks, how come I have to order a size up for overlap? So can you go over the sizing a little bit for people that are going to be ordering it online? Absolutely. So since our vests come in set sizes with a custom cut that we determined is best to fit the majority of people, um, <clears throat> we can do sizing based off just height and weight. Now, that chart is based on the panels meeting back to back. Um, so there's kind of three ways you can have your body armor. Um, you can have back to back, which the panels line up together. You can have a small gap, or some people have a very large gap, um, or an overlap. Um, now, the way that we prefer to make our armor is back to back. Um, this allows you to have the most protection area um, <clears throat> without having any sort of overlap at the side, which, which causes uh, for it to be less concealable and more bulky. Uh, so if you want to have that overlap, you've got to go up a size, and that'll get you that overlap. So, Pokemon says, why do EMS and fire need bulletproof vests? I, I wish they didn't, to be honest with you. It's absolutely ridiculous uh, that they're getting shot at, they're, that they're getting stabbed, that they're getting assaulted. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. They're neutral, uh, neutral, it's a neutral profession, they're only there to help. Um, but there's bad guys, there's bad, uh, there's... Uh, you see the, the modern, what, what's happening today is that we're seeing a revolution between law enforcement and EMS where paths are starting to overlap. 20 years ago, if three people were shot on the ground, EMS wouldn't come in until the scene was, was secure, and they get a lot of crap over that still today. But we're seeing more and more where EMS is asked to go into, not into a hot zone, but into a warm zone, where the immediate situation has been dealt with, but they're coming in to a situation that can't possibly be completely secured. If you had a situation where someone was shot, let's say, here in this convention center, you're talking about a million square feet of space. There's no way because one individual who is a lethal threat is down that we can guarantee that there are more. So are we going to have EMS wait out this entire convention center being cleared out before they come take care of the guy? Or are they going to come into what is a warm area of a scene with law enforcement support? So since they're doing more, they're coming into warmer and warmer scenes because it's required. We just had the incident here in Vegas right recently where no one knew if that scene was secure for hours. Are you going to wait for hours to let EMS come in? Or is it better to equip them with some type of armor so at least if the to whom it may concern rounds find them their way or if someone mistakes them for law enforcement or it's just nuts and starts shooting at them, they have some type of protection. Your body armor isn't permanent protection. What it does is it stops the rounds that are to whom it may concern. They get shot in your general direction and manage to hit the armor and it helps with rounds that come through intermediate barriers. People talk about rounds going through cars. You're a lot better off hiding behind a car. If you're EMS, you're on a scene, you have to jump behind a car because something kicks off again. You're a lot better off with body armor because anything that comes through the car has already lost a significant amount of kinetic energy. And when it hits the armor, the armor is even more likely to stop it and stop it even better. Perfect answer. So that's, Absolutely perfect. That's why it, and today, just in the couple times that I've stopped by the booth, <clears throat> They have, I've been watching the armor fly off the shelves, people buying them for their kids that are in the fire department, administrators buying them in, in huge batches. Didn't you guys just do New Orleans? Yeah, New Orleans, New Orleans just purchased a couple hundred of them for all their all their EMTs. I mean, it's and it's it's cheap insurance. You're not going to get insurance that's cheaper than $500 a head that lasts for five years. You're, you're not going to get cheaper insurance than that. And I think to, to not give them body armor over the cost or public stigma of it is silly. I mean, what's the public stigma of this? Right? Like, it looks like a reflective vest. No one's, most people aren't even going to notice what this is. But it's, it's extra protection for the people. And actually, while you're on that, that's exactly why the first response was designed in the way that it was. Um, and that's why this came out before the tactical vest that everyone was looking for. Because one of the biggest complaints that we get from a lot of departments is that, oh, body armor is, is looks too tactical, it'll scare patients, it'll scare people. Well, we wanted to make sure we had a vest that looked professional and wasn't intimidating um, and you know would help them stand out as who they are and not law enforcement in many cases. 
Uh, Jezza says, will body armor protect you from blunt impacts? All of our body armor is strike resistant. Um, I've personally been hit with a baseball bat many times, those golf clubs, a, a bunch funny. of stuff. Yeah. Um, and whenever we do those videos, normally you think we can get someone to just take a good swing the first time, but that's not the case. I have to end up getting hit 40, 50 times before we finally get a video that, that, that is enough for something that we can so publish. So people can see it and be mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, that actually Yeah, works. so it does work. I've never had any bruising, no nothing. Um, it's not too pleasant to be hit with a baseball bat really hard, but you're fine afterwards. It's not too pleasant to be shot with a bullet either, but no, 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 people it's have not. unrealistic expectations of what body armor will do, but at the end of the day, if it, if it reduces the trauma to the point where you're not spending eight months in the emergency room, or eight months at the hospital, that's that's the name of the game. Mm -hmm. it's, it's to negate some of that trauma. It's You're not going to get hit with a baseball bat and not get hurt, you hit it with a baseball bat and not be knocked out. Knocked out of the fight. Weston Stout says, hey Tommy, so is your highest level soft plate as strong as your as your highest level hard plate? Soft body armor will never be as protective as hard armor. Um, well, rifle not rated in 2017. Armor. No. Not in 2017. No, that, yes, it's just, it's a whole different type of armor. Um, soft armor can't stop rifles other than... 22 subsonic 300 blackout in our case the p90 um, but anything larger than that you got to have hard armor uh randall actually no randall and he is a canine officer uh, in the south chicago suburbs is are you guys have any plans of doing canine vests in the future you asked me before about our future future plans yeah. canine is definitely one of them that seems it seems like it would be a natural progression. I wanted to do that one directly after the concealable vest. Uh, I definitely want to help all the, help out all those canines and get them into something also that's very comfortable and more protection as well. Um, but unfortunately, we we have a lot of other things that we have to deal with first. But that's definitely definitely coming in the future. And I know a lot of agencies are really they're really they're they're not they're not really receptive to the idea of spending eighteen hundred dollars on a canine vest. Yeah, which is what they're they're running from a lot of manufacturers. Absolutely, and. I, all, like double digit. Yeah, well, when, when our canine vest comes out, we're going to be using the same same materials and, and everything that we use in our the vest that you would wear. Um, and it, there's no chance it's going to be that much. I, mean, <laughs> I expect it to be the same price probably um, as our regular vest. I don't know what canine vests are running now, but I know the last time I checked, they're like 1600 bucks. They're pretty expensive. And the problem with canine vests is sometimes an agency will buy them and then the dog just doesn't want to wear it. And so now they've spent all this money on something that they can't even use. Mm -hmm. Mike Wilkerson says, great to meet you. Thank you for your work and zeal. I love it. Friends and thanks for protecting my friends like Tom. Couldn't say better myself. Free vest for everyone? No. <laughs> uh, unpronounceable, but then Westfall, I can pronounce that. I'm not good with the pronunciations, me from Chicago. Can you discuss performance and style differences and any weight differences between the level 3A plus first response enhanced and the concealable enhanced version? So the, the difference between the 3A plus and the 3A is very slight. While you get a lot more protection in the plus model, it only weighs about half a pound more um, in most sizes and is only about one to two millimeters thicker. Um, so no one really notices the difference. Even we don't notice the difference when we handle them every day. We have to actually open that vest, look for the red panel to make sure that's the plus. Especially in the external carrier. In the external carrier, you're like it's it's very hard to tell whether it's like I could I couldn't tell you if this is which one this is here, just just feeling it. Okay. Uh, Dylan says, are the patches removable slash interchangeable? Yes, they are, and we can make these say absolutely anything you want. Um, and you probably can't tell um, from the video, but unlike a lot of companies where they have a you know, a bit, you know, they sew the Velcro on top, you stick that on, it's sticking off your body about, you know, a quarter, half of an inch, and they get torn off, uh, you know, as you rub up against things. All of our vests have recessed Velcro, so it keeps it much closer to the body, um, so that's not going to come off or get snagged on anything. And what I've, what I've seen from wearing it is that a lot of, a lot of armor companies, they'll make all the Velcro, especially when it's, when it's not recessed, what you'll get is your sleeve will get caught on the Velcro on the corner and it'll start ripping holes under your armpits. And this, this negates that because you can't, you don't have any of the, the hook side Velcro isn't sticking out off the sides of the, the panel because it's recessed underneath the material. You kind of have to see it to get a full appreciation for it. But if you've ever ripped a $90 Blower shirt from turning a steering wheel and ripped the underside of it from doing it too much, you'll appreciate it. Already did the vest for dogs things. If 
fire department, Ryan says fire department and EMS were wearing it at the Las Vegas shooting. I don't know, was that, was was any of your stuff being um, used by... We, we have a lot of armor within law enforcement, EMS, and even in Mandalay Bay. Um, no one, um, luckily no one that I know of that was wearing our armor, no one got hit, everyone was okay. Um, there was some there, um, none of it had to be used, luckily. The one happy story from the entire event is that nobody was wearing the vest got hit with anything. Right. Molly external vest, we went Come over in. that. Ryan says, can you do payment plans? I work security and have to buy my own. Now that's something that we've been thinking about since we started the company because we the whole concept behind our vest is to bring high quality body armor without the high price tag for people who aren't given it by their department um, and for security and EMS who may not make as much. Um, so the vest was made to be cheaper to begin with without sacrificing quality. Now to do payment plans, we're a small company, we can't do all that up front for individuals. Um, now once we hit our two year mark in January, um, we can then start working with other companies who will offer a payment plan with us, um, which is something that we are considering and I, I do hope to do for you guys that uh, might need a little assistance. Hopefully financing in the future. Uh, Mr. Fusion says, you thinking about making gloves? We, I like to release a product every six months, a big product, and in between I call them little kind of filler products, kind of like we had our body armor bag. Um, gloves will probably be one of our filler products in between something. Alrighty. Uh, Kelmouth Falls here in Oregon. Everyone is cross-trained for fire, EMS, and police and take turns to pa on patrol and fire. Well, and being able to switch out patches would be pretty, pretty cool then, wouldn't it? Uh, John Grubb says, how many rounds before the plate armor is compromised? Technically one. Anytime body armor is shot, it should be replaced. So it is compromised after one. Can it take multiple hits? Yes. I've put up to 12, 15 shots in, in our plate. The panel, I've personally put 100 without anything going through. Um, but everything should be replaced after one shot. If you've got questions about how the, the plate actually works, I've got a video shooting, it's, I think it's just entitled Shooting Rifle Plate. This is a ceramic mosaic armor, and you can see I actually shoot it. We shoot it, I think, three or four times with 30 at 6 AP and with 7.62 by 54 R, and I show the limitations of how far to the edge of the plate a plate can, like this can be hit, and it'll be effective or ineffective, and also how the plate actually works. So you get a better understanding of why, if you hit a ceramic plate in a single spot, even a, a mosaic ceramic like this, that spot is no longer necessarily bulletproof, but that doesn't mean the other areas of the plate are not gonna be able to take hits. So if you took a hit here, here, and here, chances are all of those would be stopped. If you took a, plate, a shot here and here, chances are it would go through. And that's just, that's just the reality of ceramic armor and the abilities of level four armor to get to that 30-06 AP area. But I shoot one of these and then we take it apart. So if you have any questions about how they work or what the limitations are, you should be able to see that and get a good idea of, of what these do. That really also depends what sort of caliber we're looking at too, because there are times where we'll hit two, two, three, or five, five, six in the same spot a couple times and we'll stop it. Yeah. Beyond it that, you know, it, beyond that, and depending on the caliber, velocity, distance, all that, it's all you know, it, we're it talking all changes. At the limits of the armor, at 30 out six AP, <clears throat> the ceramic tiles are only about yay big. So as long as you're hitting different tiles each time inside and they overlap. So as long as you're hitting different tiles inside each time, it should stop to the limits of the plate each time. Absolutely. But they obviously can't guarantee that because if a crack gets into another another plate, it's going to go through. But that's that's all ceramic armor. That's just the nature of the beast when you're dealing with ceramics. And that's the only way I'm aware of now that you can stop level four threats. Ceramics, ceramics, right ceramic now. or steel, but it, then it gets unbearably yeah, heavy. Yeah, you're talking about a heavy plate with steel. Knife resistant? All of our vests are slash resistant, our 3A plus spike resistant. There's a video of you trying to get it with stabbing at it with an ice pick, which is an, a worst case scenario. Destroyed it. Um, People thought I was BSing with the ice pick, so we stabbed it with a K bar right afterward. The video that we're really even, wouldn't even touch it. The video that we're releasing as well, we we, we got a K bar as well. We can't get anything through that. We've never been able to get anything through. And that's level one spike resistant. You, just, you can't get anything through. Mr. Fusion says, how is it better than 
a bullet safe vest. I don't know if you're familiar with bullet safe I'm vests. actually very familiar with a uh, bullet safe vest. Now, uh, a bullet safe vest will do exactly what it says that it will. It will stop, it will stop bullets up to level 3A. Now, a bullet safe vest will will do just that, but it really is more of a just in case sort of sort of vest. Um, that one comes in at a, about $100 cheaper than Safe Life Defense. Um, the the difference is that it wasn't designed for daily wear, so if you try and move your arms, you stop about here. Um, doesn't have the side coverage made out of polyethylene. We went over that earlier, how that can kind of essentially melt in heat. Um, and heat, and it's just uh, it's it's just not made for for daily use. Um, great, just in case. Armando says ballistic helmets. Question Maybe mark? in the far future. Yeah, ballistic helmets is kind of a saturated market right now. Yeah, I've also been looking into making level three polyethylene ballistic helmets. Uh, they're a bit thick at the moment, but uh, <laughs> they're unless I can come out with something that's much better than what's out there, I don't see the purpose. Yeah. Yeah, we just did the ballistic helmets thing. Will the uh, safe life defense vest, the spike resistant one, stipe? stop a knife slash. The one that is not spike resistant will as well. Yeah, both I've, of them. I did a video, it's called uh, Body Armor for Police and Security, where I talk about how almost all vests, that even all the, the old level 2A Kevlar vests are very slash resistant. That's why we make mm -hmm. the gloves, the police gloves, the um, patch, and uh, many other companies make that have a Kevlar liner in them. A single layer of that Kevlar liner yeah. will, will, will stop almost all slashing attacks. So a vest, almost all Kevlar based, or all ballistic vests are going to be very, very slash resistant. So when you get in a spike that you have a problem, the thinner and sharper the point is, the harder it is for it to go through, which is why we're really happy with the, <laughs> the ice pick, not even... Yeah, definite. absolutely. Andrew, help you out. Randall says, I currently use K9 Armor Express bullet slash stab vest. It cost me $975, I believe. It was donated. That's good. fantastic. Whoever donated it, that's good great. Good thing it was donated. Uh, Maxwell says, can you layer hard armor over soft? That's exactly how our plates are designed to be used. Um, so the, the one thing we went over before, um, the in ICW uh, means that that plate is designed to be used in conjunction, has to be used over soft armor to achieve that level. You get a thinner plate, a lighter plate, and a higher level of protection in most cases. Although when I shot this with 30-06 AP, the first round that I hit it with in the middle did not exit the plate. So they're not rating it as standalone, but it's not like you're guaranteed this is going to slow it down, it's going to stop in the vest. The first round I hit it with, the plate stopped it on its own. <laughs> Mr. Fusion says, how come I don't have my own from field training t-shirt you can buy? I'm working on that, and actually I just got the patches shipped in. So within the next couple of weeks, we're going to have patches that are the same size as this, so the size of a normal patch for a uniform shirt, and I have free field training patches that we're going to come out with. I'm going to put them out on the website. That's awesome. I'm working on the pricing right now and shipping and stuff, because I want to make it as cheap as possible to get them out to people. Eric Towers. Here's one that I was going to ask earlier I forgot about. He says he's in need of a, a high-vis yellow vest for his site. Any possibilities of, at some point, making this type of thing in yellow? We've we've definitely had that asked before, and it's something that I want to do. Um, with how many combinations and how many ways you can customize this vest, adding another color is an absolute nightmare for us as far as logistics go and storage. But it is something that I do plan on doing in the future. I think that, I honestly, personally, I think that's awesome. I was going to ask that earlier, because if you could make it any level... ANSI certified mm -hmm. as body armor, that's an easy sell to an administrator, especially for a security department. Like, whoop, it's your it's your one vest. Right? You we put might, it on and then it's everything. We might knock that up on the priority list. Yep, yep, I would. Um, Melvin Clark says, I would like to say that their product is top notch. I recently acquired 16 vests for a company in Alaska, and all our officers agree on the best product out there. How you doing, Melvin? I, I, I definitely remember you. Glad you like your vest. Jezza says you could spray paint it yellow. I don't think that's going to work, homie. Uh, Mike Wilgerson says, I specialize in reviewing law enforcement stuff in TV and movies like we do with Tommy. What in a TV feature fume history makes you groan when you see how bulletproof vests are portrayed and why? So what, what's a popular conception of bulletproof vests that people get from TV and movies? 
that that you see and you go, oh, now I got to now I'm gonna have to field phone calls about this and answer questions. Oh, okay. I mean, with movies, there nothing nothing seems real, so I kind I kind of blow that off. I mean, uh, a lot of the times. The, they'll get hit and they'll fall down and I mean I mean they fall down but they'll, they'll pretend like they're dead and then a couple hours later they'll come back um, you know that's uh, I was one of my vests yeah yeah no it's 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 a miracle um, you know it, it can knock you down but you're not you're not knocked out I suppose and unless you yeah, get your head falling or something I guess yeah then that, that could definitely do it the other one is that it'll just stop absolutely anything and they're invincible um, and they're not they don't have big bruises mm-hmm. from getting hit with stuff mm-hmm. afterward. That's not a reality in any soft armor at all, anywhere. Uh, John Grubb says, is there an expiration date for plates? So how for how long do these go? Like, what is the expiration on one of your ceramic Most plates? plates, including ours, don't have an expiration date. There you go. Mike Wilkerson says the ice pick protection video will make your eyes bug out. Check it out on the website. Yeah, it will. Mike Wilkerson does um, he does podcasts where he takes movies and then gets professionals from industries to come in and talk about aspects of the movies. Ah. Like what's realistic and what's not realistic. It's called awesome. uh, the Two Guys Talking Podcast Network. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah. That's why he keeps asking those questions. Future Police says, can you explain the different types of armor, steel, ceramic, how they differ and what it will stop. So what's what sets this apart, since you're talking twice the price, basically, between a non-coated steel plate and this, what sets this apart? What makes it worth the extra $69? Now, non-coated makes a big difference. Uh, well, because well, if start it's off- coated, you're, you're bumping the price up. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. So. Um, first of all, steel is significantly lighter. Typically, about three times lighter. Um, for a lot of people, if you haven't worn a plate carrier with steel plates before, um, it can be pretty miserable. So we only focus on making um, products that are for everyday use and practical for everyday use. So ceramic is definitely the way to go. It's more lightweight. Um, additionally, with steel and uncoated steel, especially if if when a bullet hits uncoated steel, that bullet fragments and that that and basically splatter will come up into your neck and can be lethal um, unless there's an anti-spall coating in which case um, it's basically like rhino liner all over the steel which will keep that keep catch that fragmentation um, it it definitely works it can it kind of comes off but after it, a few shots it, there at, at that point when you put the rhino liner on the steel one you're adding thickness which makes it about the same thickness as an in conjunction with level four plate and on top of that you're adding additional cost. So you're ruining some, like, the, the great thing about steel plates is that they don't cost as much and they're thin. So when you put a big buildup of, of rhino liner on it to take away the bad side of steel and that fragments are gonna fly all over the place when you get hit with it, now you've, you've eliminated the advantages of steel and you're still, you're carrying twice the weight. Around. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> you know, steel also one other uh, you know possible advantage of steel is that it can take multiple hits. It'll t- or not, it, st- ceramic can as well. Don't get me wrong, but it can take many, many more. Um, the argument to that, however, is though, why are you why taking are you so many around? hits uh, to begin with? Oh, it can stop a hundred rounds. Like, okay, that's cool. This this one will stop you a few times, and and that's you what you be- need because you should be diving behind something mm-hmm. after the first one. Also, one more thing, there, like we mentioned before, there aren't currently any realistic level 4 plates that you can wear, so ceramic is the way to go to get even more protection. Yeah, I didn't even think about that, the protection level. Uh, Ryan says, what vest do you recommend for uh, unarmed security, but in hiring process for local PD that uses under uniform vests? So if he wants to be able to use the same vest, let's say he's working, he's working security now and He's getting a job with a PD that's going to require he buy his own vest, but it has to be concealed. Sure. So uh, just go for the concealable vest. You can wear it for security and the police department. There's no there's no difference for body armor for different professions. Mike Wilkerson asks, is the associated cost with modern bulletproof vests today simply a they want to make more money thing, or is there a true reason that they are inordinately more expensive. There's 
two main reasons why we are significantly more affordable. Uh, first is that we don't purchase pre-manufactured sheets of Kevlar. What we do is we purchase Kevlar threads and manufacture it into our own custom ballistic material. Um, that saves on cost for us significantly. Um, that also allows us to get a higher protection level um, at a cheaper price. Two, we do set sizing. Um, the custom fit, it takes forever. It doubles the cost of the armor. And in most cases, it doesn't even fit properly afterwards. And you can't exchange that. What we do is we do set sizing that are highly adjustable. They fit about 99% of the population. Uh, we can do sizing based off height and weight, ship it out same day. If it doesn't fit, we exchange it for free. I've heard back and forth from people that have had to exchange it back because they mismeasured or they wanted an overlap and didn't get an overlap and they just ship it right back. One other thing is if you are buying a vest, don't go off your t-shirt size or what you think you normally wear, please. Uh, because uh, a lot of people go, well, I wear large shirts, I wear large this, but they're really an extra small vest. Go with the sizing chart because if you go off your t-shirt size, not the sizing chart, it's going to be wrong. He's talking about I me. I promise you. He's talking about <laughs> me. I did that. Ryan says, "Are any of the vests rated to stop a needle?" I don't. I don't think you. I don't think you'd be able to push that through anything, dude. That's. I mean, it might make it through, but what would a needle get in? But also, that would bend very easily. Yeah, that would be worse than the ice pick. That would. Mm -hmm. That would bend up. Right. Eric Tower says, "My site would love the ability to have high vis safety vest uh, safety standards." What changes with the sizing? Is an XL taller than a large, uh, like from sternum to navel, from sternum to navel taller? Each, every single size that we have was designed in a way that would fit the majority of people. So each vest has a design, has changes that are a little bit different. Um, some of them are taller. Um, some of them are taller and wider. Um, it really depends on the size. In the case of the large, the extra large, the extra large is about half an inch taller, um, and it has about an inch and a half of extra side coverage. Right, so if you have questions, call or email them so that you can take measurements and they can compare. Randall Lee says, seems like a legit vest. Thanks for all you do and keep us safe. Oop, hold on, I almost blocked Randall. That's no good. Randall, you want to handle one, I've got one, so come talk to me. Eric says bulletproof bikinis, no. The Iceman says, so the panels can say anything, winky face? Uh, as long, I mean, for most cases, yes. There are a few obscenities that we probably not want associated with ours, at least from what we're making. Um, but for the most case, we can make it say anything. So if someone wanted to buy a specific law enforcement agency one, what documentation would they have to send to you to get that? Uh, you can definitely you can definitely send in uh, you know, if you have a company ID that definitely helps. Um, in most cases, uh, people pe most of the custom vests that we make are from departments for for those actual departments. Um, but we request an ID for anything extremely specific. Okay, so that answers both the the, the joke question and the real question. Tyler says, is there an ID patch that says innocent bystander? We do custom patches if you make it. I'm sure they would make that. That, that would make a good Instagram picture, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Deputy Camo says, I am a taller guy. Can I put an 11 by 14 plate in an XL carrier? Right now, our extra large carrier takes a 10 by 12. Uh, we're considering changing our, our vest to accept 11 by 14 in the larger sizes. Um, but when we started, we could only make one plate because we were so new. I, there's no way I could afford making multiple sizes. Um, so now we're, we do plan on making larger sizes for the larger vests and in the new carriers. I don't know when that's going to happen, but probably sometime soon. Uh, Mike Wilkerson says, I'm a big t-shirt guy. Is the material that vests are made of made of something that helps to prevent odor buildup? I have to toss t-shirts out after about two months. Well, uh, they are antimicrobial, which helps with the smell. And uh, the mesh backing does, uh, does help a bit. Um, but as far as body odor goes, that can really stick to anything. So you're, you're going to have to wash my, and wash. My suggestion, because I'm a stinky dude, is... Buy two carriers. 
uh, if you can afford it, buy two carriers, and then you can have one that you can clean and let sit out to dry so you can get the maximum life out of it. Because if you machine wash most carriers, they start to fade and fall apart. Uh, you can you can hand wash it pretty easy, and it'll keep it'll keep it crisp. And then you'll be able to wash one, let it sit out to dry while you're using the other one. That that I found to be a really good solution in the long term. I do also recommend hand washing. You can do it in a machine on a delicate setting, but they're water resistant and antimicrobial, so it takes almost nothing to clean them off. Mike says, "What's the cost on Tommy's hot, uh, Hobbit and armor for real short people?" I actually have a normal size torso. Just really short. Actually, that, that other vest fits you very well. That what was that an extra large? It was an extra large. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he fits just. I'm fine. a big guy. I'm just short. It's <laughs> weird. I'm I'm square shaped. It's from sleeping in a small bed when I was little. Uh, Deputy Dave says, "What do you recommend uh, help air circulation cooling under a vest?" A safe life defense vest. We're born in Las Vegas. We're made out of Las Vegas. We're designed for heat. We use self-structured panels. Helps with more air circulation as well as the mesh, mesh backing. Um, so that's you know that's the, one of the biggest things about us as far as our comfort levels. Uh, aside so, from that, you might have some recommendations because we don't have that complaint. Um, the I have I wear a level two armor that's issued by my agency at work, and it doesn't have mesh backing. And the the interesting thing with these is that the the concealable even your concealable armor because you're here in Vegas they do mesh backing on the concealable armor, which is unusual. Normally when you get um, a, a vest a concealable vest. It, it like sticks to you. You'll sweat and then it'll stick and it like feels like saran wrap, especially if you're just wearing it over a t-shirt and then putting your shirt on top of it. And the mesh backing really really does seem to help with that. You get just a little bit of airflow. Yep. And it really helps it dry out faster when you take it off. Yeah, that, that saran wrap we call Kevlar cling. It's just that, that super flexible, it's, it's just, it just clings to you. Uh, that's why we also make our panel self-structured, so it gets you a little bit more airflow. Eric Tower says, I love the ANGEL program. I hope I don't have to wait until tax refund time. Well, thank you. We love uh, picking people each month that, uh, that we can donate body armor to. So you guys give away uh, one vest every month? At least one needs. vest we've been doing. Uh, lately, it's been about every other month, but we're giving between 7 and 12. So we make up for it. Okay. All right. Uh, future Police says, I am wearing... A concealable vest now, and I want to. Th I want a throw-on. How do I measure for the throw-on? You mean the sizing should be exactly? It should be exactly. It should the be same. the same thing, um, unless you're putting a lot of layers on. Yeah, then you can go size up. Yeah. Uh, if it's one of ours, we just need height and weight. We'll get it taken care of. The <laughs> Iceman says, "What an AJ rating subs AT4 rockets." One uh, I don't know of. Yeah, that's not a thing. Deputy Camo says, thanks for all the answers, guys. I have to go shower before duty tomorrow. The extra large carrier comes in. Can't wait to put my panels in. We'll rematch for Molly question at work later. We'll rematch for Molly. Cool, totally. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand what you're saying, but I think spell well, I hope check. you like your new carrier. I, I think spell check got you. I think he's saying he, he wants to buy a Molly one when it comes out. Tyler says, do you guys have armor ready to stop a 15-inch shell from a naval gun asking for a friend? Don't stand in front mm -hmm. of 15-inch naval no. guns. No. Problem solved. All right, that's 48 minutes, and before YouTube has a seizure about us being on here too long, uh, thanks for coming on and for answering everybody's questions. Hopefully that answers everything for guys in the future. All right, until next week, you guys be safe. Take care of each other. Boop.